Hi everyone, Brendan here from c21teaching.com.au and if you're watching this video then it's probably because you have signed up for my Flip the Lesson workshop at FlipCon Australia 2017. In this pre-learning video we're going to go through the lesson planning template that we'll be spending a fair bit of time looking at during that workshop uh, and I'll be going through how you can utilize that just so that you can get started and then we'll spend a bit more time talking about it in depth and some of the practicalities about implementing the uh, lesson that you've planned during that workshop. To access the lesson plan template, uh, go to the URL that's on screen. Uh, this is one that I've put together myself. Feel free to make modifications if you do need to, but for the purposes of this workshop, uh, please use it as is. So let's get going. I'm a big believer in backward mapping, starting with the end in mind. And as part of that, what I would always recommend that you start with is what your learning goals are, and then what the success indicators for those learning goals are also are. So this first section in the lesson plan template will allows you is just some basic information about the lesson itself, but the important part is the bottom two sections. Now I'm a primary trained teacher, so my example will be based in the primary space, and what you put here will vary depending on your particular subject. The learning goal from, uh, for this one for me is that my students are able to add and subtract decimals with the same number of decimal places. So we're looking at a year five, year six class here, and the success indicators for that are uh, that students have successful calculation of answers consistently, but also that they're able to explain their process of calculating across the decimal point uh, and can then identify uh, errors as well. The next section gives you the chance to really focus on what are the key concepts that you need students to understand to achieve that learning goal and really break that down. So the general idea is that one concept then equates to one learning object. For this particular lesson, the key concepts that I need my students to be able to really understand are that the numbers and then the decimal points are aligned, you know, one above the other, that the addition and subtraction processes are the same with decimals as they are with whole numbers, that tenths and hundredths are not whole numbers, and that is a follow on from that, that we don't say 4.72, but we say 4.72 and why that is. So the reason that we break this down and we have one of the key concepts broken down in dot points there is that generally speaking, each one of those will equate to a learning object. So the explicit instruction required for each learning object on this part of the template will equate back to the previous section. So the explicit instruction, first of all, I need to model and explain the importance of writing numbers and decimal points so that they're aligned directly under, under each other. I need to model adding and subtracting two decimal numbers with the same number of decimal points and highlight that the process is the same with decimal points as it is without the decimal point. I then need to model the and discuss the explanation of why tenths and hundreds are not whole numbers uh, and then obviously model the correct way of saying numbers with decimal points. The next section is all about the group learning space. So up to this point, we've been looking at the individual learning space, the explicit, explicit instruction. In this section, we're going to focus on the group learning space, which is what you'll then be doing with the students when they come to you having completed the pre-learning and engaged with the learning objects. So the first part of this is that you wanna be doing a check. So you need to think about and be really explicit and deliberate about what it is that you're looking for before the students engage in the group learning space activities and what are your success criteria for those activities. So for me, uh, in this particular context, I'll be talking, you know, this will be a class conversation, a class discussion. Uh, and we'll be asking students, you know, what did you notice about adding and subtracting decimals from the learning objects? Talk about student misconceptions, what they were, and then how their thinking has changed. To get students to be able to explain their process for adding and subtracting decimals and how to check if it's correct. And the next section is mapping out what are the actual activities that you want students to be doing in the group learning space. These should be active learning activities. So they should actually be doing something where they're applying, where they're analyzing, evaluating, creating, something along those lines in the classroom. So for this particular example, where we're looking at adding and subtracting numbers with the same number of decimal places, the things that I'm focusing on are generally speaking real world activities. So there'll be a shopping activity. And we'll be focusing there on students being able to correctly lay out, calculate those answers, but then also there'll be a bit of a conversation around the mental calculation. And on the right hand side, you can see that I've mapped those back to a particular learning object. That's there to help me make sure that I have actually hit each of those concepts that I've realized that I want to cover to make sure that I actually do cover everything that I want. Next activity is all about peer teaching and then the final one is a reflection. The number of activities that you have, the types of activities, the length required for those activities etc, all of the details on this particular section will vary greatly depending on the age of your students 
in the subject that you're teaching, the concept it is that you're teaching. You'll need to make a professional judgment about the relative details here, but that's just a bit of a guide for what I've put down for this particular lesson with my year five and six students. The next section is all about assessment. The first part is what is it that you're actually assessing? How are you going to assess it? And then what are the success criteria? What I'm assessing is can the students add and subtract decimals with the same number of places, of decimal places? How I'll be assessing that will be through work samples, listening to explanations from conversations with students, from peer teaching videos, and then the success criteria is that they can correct, they have correct answers and that they can give a ex uh, explanation of how they've gotten that process. The two bottom sections, who needs what additional support and who needs to be further challenged, you'll know for your particular classes who will need what support and who will need challenge. So fill those in relative to your particular class. The last section I think is actually one of the most important and it's all about reflection on the lesson. So this is for you to strengthen the lesson next time you utilize it. So what worked well and why did it work well and what can be proved upon how can it be improved and why is that improvement necessary? So that's a quick run through of the lesson planning template. We'll be spending a fair chunk of the workshop going through that in more depth and you'll have a chance obviously to ask uh, specific questions. We'll be able to talk about particular context, subject areas, etc. Again, there's the link if you do want to download the template and bring some copies uh, for yourself. You can, of course, use it as a soft copy. I will have a limited number of hard copies with me. But yeah, please do grab the, uh, the, the template for yourself. Feel free to use it and share it around to your colleagues. Thanks very much for watching.